Hey guys, welcome back. Android P is currently running on many devices like Pixel, Essential Phone, OnePlus 6, Mi Mix 2S and Nokia 7 Plus as a part of Android P beta program. But the thing with Android P beta program is that the ROM were always been closed source. So there was no possibility of porting these Google beta ROMs to some other phones. But with the developments happening with Project Treble, now this is very much possible. First we got few phones other than Google Pixel series running Android P beta. Next we got few working Android P beta ports for Motorola Moto Z and the same developer who managed to port Android P to Moto Z now released a generic Android P developer preview 3 GSI image and it is working for some Snapdragon treble enabled devices with A only partition. Like I said, the GSI is only compatible with A only partition phones like OnePlus 5, 5T, Mi 5, Mi 6, Redmi Note 4, Redmi Note 5 Pro, but it don't work on phones like OnePlus 6 and Mi A1 for now. Now let's see how to get this Android P Developer Preview 3 port running on OnePlus 5 and 5T. One thing to note is that even though OnePlus 5 and 5T officially supports Project Treble, you still need more key Treble implementation. So I was running open beta 12 firmware on OnePlus 5T before trying this process but the firmware version shouldn't matter as we are installing Moki ROM first before installing Android P. First you need an unlocked bootloader so if you have a locked bootloader take a backup of internal storage and unlock it and regarding the recovery version I have used TWRP version 3.2.1 Codework X version for 5T. So once you have finished installing the recovery, boot to the recovery first, select wipe from home screen, format data and type S to continue. Formatting data partition will wipe your entire internal storage. So backup first and we need to do the data partition format because the auxin voice versions are encrypted and we need to decrypt first in order to get Android P work on our phones. After data partition format, go back, reboot to recovery, now go to wipe and swipe to factory reset. Now go to adb and fastboot folder on your PC and here I have Moki build, no variety zip file and GSI related files. First transfer Moki rom and no variety zip file to your phone via MTP mode. You can also transfer all these files at once. Once you have transferred flash Moki rom first and I have used the 16th July nightly here and next flash no variety zip. After flashing is done reboot to the OS. And this is the initial setup of Moki OS and finish the initial setup and reboot to TWRP again. And now again wipe from home screen, swipe to factory reset. Now go to ADB and fastboot folder on your PC, extract db3.amg zip file contents to your new folder, copy the .img system image, 3 post zips in call to zip and magisk zip and transfer it to your phone. Select install from home screen, install image, now navigate to the .img file which is transferred, select it and swipe to confirm flash with partition to flash image as system image. The flashing process will take about 15 seconds max. So once it is done, go back to TWRP home screen, mount tab, select vendor, now go back again install tab and flash the post zips in order from 1 to 3 and flash in call to zip to fix in call audio bug. As you can see here in call to zip file flash failed as I haven't mounted system partition. So go back to home screen, mount tab, select system partition and try flashing in call to zip again. So that's it, we have finished installing Android P Developer Preview 3 on our OnePlus 5T. Let's reboot and there is no setup screen and the boot time is less than 2 minutes. On the welcome screen you will be getting an error saying internal problem, ignore it, it's not an issue and it says that device is currently enrolled in Android P beta program. If you wanna install Magisk, boot to TWRP again and flash the Magisk rebel version just like any other zip file and reboot your phone. The launcher is a default pixel launcher. And if you notice there are some persistent notifications on the status bar, the play store won't work and there will be a considerable amount of lag while navigating through apps, settings and everything. In order to fix this lag you need to download Google Play services app 
and install it and one thing to note is that the MTP mode doesn't work so you cannot simply transfer a file with connecting phone to PC. According to the developer you can fix the MTP mode by going to the developer options and setting the default USB configuration to file transfer but I tried it on 5T and it didn't work. You can download it from the browser like me or you can simply boot to the RBRP again, connect phone to the PC and transfer the required files. Before installing Google Play services for stock pixel setup and after installing when the pixel setup blue notification appears again, open it, connect to Wi-Fi and for stop pixel setup again and reboot your phone. Now as you can see here the OS is very smooth, I really like the fluidity of the OS, it feels like this is an official update. I've added my Geo 4G VLT SIM and as you can see there is no signal. The problem here is with the APN. In order to fix this go to settings, network and internet, mobile network, access point names and create an access point name with APN as GeoNet and next go to SIM cards from network and internet tab and set mobile data to Geo and voila it is working fine now. Even though LTE works, VLT is not working, you cannot make calls even with Geo 4G voice app, you can only send text messages with that app. That being said, no issues with HSPA or 3G, calls and text messages work fine, no issue with the audio be it with EOPs or with the loudspeaker and this is how the new incoming call notification looks. Let's open settings, system tab, about phone, the device name is Pixel XL as this is a port from Pixel XL and as you can see the Android version is 9 with June 5 security patch. Once you have updated Google Play services app, there will be no issue setting up Google account. As you can see here, I have added my Google account and I was able to download all apps without any issue. Coming to the launcher, you can long press anywhere on the home screen to get to the home settings, add widgets and change wallpapers. And under home settings, you can control notification dots, display or hide Google app on home screen and change icon shapes. There are a bunch of wallpapers to pick from, there are static wallpapers and there are also live wallpapers and they all work fine. The stock Google full screen gestures also work great and in order to enable this go to the settings, system tab, gesture and enable swipe up on home screen. To switch apps you can swipe once and you can use the slider to switch from one app to another app. To access all apps, I mean the app drawer, swipe up again. And when you slide all the open tabs to the right, you can find the clear all tabs button. This is a new setting panel with colored tabs, network and internet tab. As we have already seen here, no issues with calls apart from Vivo LTE and hotspot is fine too. Setting up Bluetooth with my OnePlus Bullets earphones took some time but once connected there were no issues and yes audio works fine for calls and also for media. This is the apps and notifications tab. Battery tab where you can enable battery percentage on the status bar. Display tab, night light works but adaptive brightness didn't work. This is the sound tab. This is the new volume slider. Ringtones and notification sounds all work great and the physical alert slider does nothing. Next we have storage tab, security and lock screen and as you can see here there is no way to set up a fingerprint unlock. Next we have accessibility tab and under system you have just just double press power button to enable camera app and about camera app the ROM doesn't come with any camera app. So I have installed the OnePlus camera app latest version and it works for taking pictures, manual mode, video recording, selfie pictures and videos but do note that when you open slow motion video mode the app crashes and you need to reboot your phone to get it back to work. Surprisingly all sensors work great. Accelerometer, magnetic field, orientation, gyroscope, light, proximity and some of those sensors and about GPS the location lock happened in less than 5 seconds which is great news. About benchmarking scores, Anti2 version 7 score is 1,97,259, Geekbench 4 single core score is 1,943 and multi core score is 6,641. These are very impressive scores for initial port of Android P. Overall the ROM is stable although there are few issues like no MTP mode, no ADB commands, no VVLT but everything else seems to be working great. I would not suggest to try this ROM as a daily driver but give it a try if you wanna experience the new Android P beta. So that's it, hit the like button if you found this video helpful and if you want more videos like this hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.